and welcome to Mazdaq. We are pretty much in the middle of nowhere, but this location provides good access into northern Georgia, South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Our set here up Su-27 allocated here in the western end of the base, and the Su-24 of the 16 AK are on the main flight line. A detachment of A-50 are also based here to serve as our eyes and ears. Let's taxi and take off. So, you're thinking that you might want to try your hand at DCS World, but you're not sure if it's going to be right for you. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is really like for a beginner who's starting out in DCS World. I'll make sure that you understand exactly what you're getting yourself into, and I'll try and give you some tips along the way to make sure that your experience gets better quicker. Before we proceed, I think it's important that you fully understand what DCS World is and how it works, because knowing the pitfalls and the benefits will probably help you decide if choosing DCS World over another flight simulator is the right choice for you. Now the good news is that anybody can try DCS World completely free, which I think is incredible. It's a try before you buy opportunity that you just don't see these days. With the free version, you will get the Sukhoi Su-25-2 Frog for attack aircraft and the TF-51D Mustang, each with their own set of tutorials, and you will also get the map called Caucus Theatre. The SU-25T also includes a decent set of pre-made missions and one very short campaign for you to practice on. You also have the option to make your own missions and campaigns or you can even join a multiplayer server. So for the price of absolutely nothing at all, I think that is a pretty tremendous starter pack and I haven't even mentioned the vast number of community add-ons and mods that you can add to expand it even further all for free. So no matter what your opinion of DCS World is right now, you can get a really good hands-on experience before you even spend a single penny. Now these are not high fidelity aircraft that are made available to you, and the tutorials and the campaign and the missions, they're all quite old, but they're not necessarily uh, a perfect representation of how good DCS World is now. But I'm telling you, it's going to be more than enough to get your taste buds wet enough and see whether this is the right sim for you. DCS World is available directly from the developers, from DCS themselves, and as you probably know, it's also available on Steam. Now, my version is not the Steam version, but I honestly don't know yet which one is better overall, so I won't make any assumptions on that front. Unlike some other flight sim titles like Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane 11, DCS World does not provide the entire planet for you to fly around in. Instead, DCS has a series of maps. I think there are five official maps in total at the moment, but more will become available in time, and more can be found via the community mods for free. Initially, though, only the Caucus Theatre is for free. It's a pretty good map, and it's definitely a good starting point. Both aircraft and helicopters are purchasable add-ons, they're called modules in DCS World, and these tend to appear every couple of years or so due to their level of complexity, and they can be pretty expensive at release too, from anywhere from about £50 to £90, but for pretty good reason I might add. But DCS World are pretty good at providing sales throughout the year, so you can land some great bargains when they're on, sometimes as much as 50% off or even more. DCS only caters for military aircraft and helicopters. There are no passenger jets or GA available here. And whilst you are completely free to explore each map that you own freely, most flights are focused around objectives, and in order to complete those objectives, you will need to learn a pretty hefty amount of military flight terms and procedures. 
Now, the vast majority of aircraft in DCS World are full-on study-level aircraft, but as they span from warbirds to modern day, you can kind of focus your level of complexity around the technology available in any given era. And there's also different levels of complexity. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Hopefully, though, I haven't scared you off yet. The good news is that the tutorials are actually very accomplished. OK, sure, there are some mistakes that I've noticed in a few of them, and the order in which they are presented to you is pretty questionable at times, but on the whole, the approach and the delivery of some very complex systems are cleverly thought out and segmented at a pace where two or three attempts is often enough for you to complete each tutorial. I would recommend a few more practice missions before you become proficient though, of course. So starting with the free version is definitely the right choice, and then consider upgrading with the Flaming Cliffs 3-pack. In it you'll get an F-15C, an A-10A, an Su-27 and Su-33, a MiG-29A, a MiG-29S and an Su-25. It's about $50 full price, but often, and at the point of recording this, it's on a 50% sale. That's about $25 or £18 in total. Now, the FC-3 aircraft can be bought individually, but this is definitely the most cost-effective way of buying it. And you will get a lot of content for each of those aircraft. They are simplified aircraft, allowing you to gain essential knowledge and skill without completely overloading you, but there's a lot of missions, tutorials, opportunities, mods and add-ons. They're going to keep you busy for a really long time, and if you want to land on an aircraft carrier and experience that amazing uh, sensation right there, then this definitely will do that for you. It's, it's not beyond your realm, and the Flaming Cliffs 3-pack is a brilliant place for any new flight sim fanatic to get their teeth sharpened, if you will. and final objective, Mineralne Vode. This is the set, Major Airbus, we have in the our southern region, and my plan in part of all if we move in additional air assets. We will now fly southeast back to Mazdaq. Okay, so now that you know what DCS world really is, I want to tell you what you can expect when you first jump into the application. Now, I'm not going to hold your hand in this particular video, but I am going to tell you the truth about what you can expect and perhaps give a little bit of advice to make the transition that little bit smoother. I'll provide a link at the end of the video to my full tutorial experience so you can see precisely what I encountered the first time I stepped foot in DCS World. But this video here that you're watching right now should be enough to at least get you past those first few hurdles and actually engaged and flying in DCS World. If you're already familiar with the basics of flying, then you're going to be up and running pretty fast. If you don't even know your ailerons from your elevators, then you're going to have to take a little bit longer and work quite a bit harder before you get into the more complex stuff. Maybe just repeat the takeoff tutorial five, maybe even ten times before you attempt a landing and so on. But you'll get there, I promise you. Because whatever your starting capabilities are, the first thing that you will be doing is setting up your controls. Now the game starts tutorials off by referencing the keyboard commands and if you're one of those players who's thinking of playing with the keyboard and mouse then I tip my hat to you out of respect because there's no way on earth that I could manage to do that. If you are using anything other than a keyboard and mouse though you will need to set up your yaw, your roll, your rudders, your wheel brakes and your throttle controls in the axis menu. And these steps are going to have to be repeated for every new aircraft that you're flying. It's a little bit frustrating but kind of makes sense as well because no two aircraft are exactly the same. You will also need a button for the landing gear, a button for the flaps, a power on button, a canopy open and close button and a button for your lights. Not forgetting of course the ability to turn on or off your front wheel steering and brakes for the wheels. Actually there's two sets of brakes for the wheels so make that brakes times two and for extra braking there's a chute in order to help you slow down that little bit faster. So that's at least five axis points, maybe six, and at least nine buttons to start with, maybe 15. And really do take your time when you're thinking about where you're going to put each of those keybinds on your system. Trust me, it will pay off massively in the end. 
If you're like me, and if you want to take this anywhere near seriously, then you're going to want to consider, at least, investing in a HOTAS device. Not just because it's more realistic, but because there are so many buttons to remember, and a HOTAS provides a lot of buttons. But don't just rush out and buy anything yet, though. At least wait until you are absolutely sure that this is something you can get a good return on for your investment. Now, if you've already got a joystick or something similar, then you can still make a pretty good go of it all. Especially if you consider buying something like Voice Attack. Voice Attack, if you've never heard of it, is a voice activated command software package that is considerably cheaper than buying a hot ass. And simply saying gear up in order to raise the landing gear is pretty damn cool. It's also very cheap, it's effective, and remembering voice commands is often easier than remembering button combos, especially if, like me, you have a hot ass throttle with 36 buttons on it and three modes. What that means is that those 36 buttons effectively give me 180 different button combinations. And there's also a slider modifier on there, so actually I can mount 236 individual commands onto just one throttle. That's 336 available commands to my left hand alone. And of course, the uh, software also allows me to change some of the hat switches on it into either four or eight additional button options. So we're really, uh, we're really talking about, well, a hell of a lot of available button combinations. And most complex military jets only have like 250 buttons in total anyway. So just one hot ass throttle device is enough to give you the entire aircraft button combination system. So it's worth considering. Where was I? Oh yeah. To start with, you will be learning about these commands, the terminology that's used, and you'll have to start remembering the button locations and the combos required in order to use them effectively. It is a time-consuming task. You will need to have patience, a lot of patience, and quite a bit of resilience as well, as some things you will find super duper easy. But then there are other things that will really test your patience to the limit. At the end of the day, it's just that practice makes perfect. You're not going to get this on day one, but it won't take much longer than that. Now, the tutorials themselves are pretty good overall, but some do have some issues, requiring you to be able to think outside of the box quite often. The order in which tutorials are presented to you can often cause additional issues, like an easy landing tutorial, which you only get access to after the tutorial, which has made you make your first ever landing. So the tutorials in the order that they're presented to you will make you land before you have learnt how to land that particular aircraft. That's just silly. You can do the tutorials in any order, so, you know, I've pointed it out to you, look out for it. My personal favourite was the short aircraft carrier launch tutorial that completely forgets to tell you how to unfold your wings before takeoff. Genius, and you sink pretty quickly, I can tell you that. But don't worry, because two tutorials after that tutorial, they do actually explain how to do it. Now, on the most part, the tutorials are fine, but just don't follow them blindly. Use your own logic and intuition like I did. I went off and I found what the keybind was to unfold my wings, and I got through that tutorial pretty quickly. Now, depending on your starting skill level, you will be proficient enough to cope with most situations for your first aircraft in, let's say, somewhere between 5 and 24 hours of flying time. Now, we're not talking Top Gun here, but the ability to take off, navigate and land 90% of the time without any issue, and even perhaps the ability to engage a single enemy or two will be within your grasp. In order to progress to the next level though, I think will take a little while longer, and that's where I'm heading off to now. I'm going to be putting in the hours and the practice that I need to get the skills and confidence I need to progress to the next level of difficulty and look to complete my first full campaign. I wish I could talk you through the entire DCS process from start to finish in one video, but I wanted to write down everything that I've experienced in my first hours of flying DCS before I forget those important things, or become too experienced to remember them in the way that they really happened. Fear not though, because I have started uploading my video coverage of my first few hours during the tutorials, and although I have edited them for convenience for you, I do show all of the issues, the mistakes and the victories that I encountered along the way. So if you want to know what it's really like for a new player to DCS World, 
not somebody who has edited it to make them look amazing, then I urge you to go and check those videos out. Once I have more information to share with you, I will make an updated guide like this one, and hopefully that won't be too far away from now. Until then though, this should be enough at least of a starter slash introduction to get you really involved in DCS. Trust me, if this sim is for you, then you will be hooked by the time you have completed the steps that I've mentioned in this video. Please do hit that like button if this has been helpful for you, subscribe to the channel and check out our other flight videos and reviews when you get a chance over on Sim UK Aviation. It's a great channel, I watch it all the time. Take care guys, till next time, goodbye. External cam. Yeah, my engines have gone. <laughs> have we run out of fuel? Is that what's happened? Have we run out of fuel? If that's fuel there, then yeah, we've run out of fuel. <laughs> I don't know if that is a fuel. Definitely the engines are not coming on. That's hilarious. I think we've run out of fuel. But it says my front gear is down, but external cam. It's not going to look like that. That's not normal.